What's up guys, it's Katie with 3 Printing Technology. So for this week's video, I'm going to be going over the modifier meshes and the new predecessor. So if you're any bit familiar with 3D printing, you know what Thracer is, whether that's Cura, Simplify 3D, or Precious Thracer, that's the three most popular ones right now in the consumer 3D printing market. For this video, we're going to be focusing mainly on Precious Thracer since this is one of their tools. Simplified 3D and Cure may have something similar to this, but this one is specifically for Precious Thracer. So, in the Thracer, you can modify the objects you're preparing to print, whether that's the surface, infill, how much volume it has, scale it up, etc. You can do different things to the object that you've designed. So the modifier mesh is pretty much a tool that allows you to adjust the adjust the infill and outer perimeter of the object you're getting ready to print. One example is the SpaceX coaster that Prisa used this used this with. It's pretty much a cylinder shape, and they used a cylinder shape mesh to remove the bottom and top of the SpaceX cylinder, make it into a drink coaster. For this one, I'm going to do something simple, just to give you guys an idea of what it is to really show off the tool. And then maybe in a later video, we'll do some more advanced uses with this. But anyways, I'm going to switch over to the computer and do a screen recording of it so you can see it better and then it will print it out and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so here we are inside Precious Ricer. This is their newest version 2.0. It's not Strict 3R, but as you can see we've got a XYZ calibration cube pre-loaded. You can find this on Thingiverse or probably any other file sharing website. But anyways, this is the model we're going to use for this. So as you can see on the right hand side, I've got the export tab opened. So I'm going to right click on the object and it's going to bring up this menu. I'm going to go down to add modifier and do a generic one and then use a custom one to put an Im image onto it but that's for a later video so what we're going to do here is pick spear and you can see a spear has popped up in this screen so we can drag this around to where we want to place it at Kind of hard to begin with to use it. Not really sure how to use the control interface with this one, but we're just going to adjust the z axis. To something like this. Maybe bring it down a bit. That should be good. Now I can right click on it again. Go to Rayer and Parameters. And you can see this menu has popped up on this side. So if you want just the top and bottom to be exposed, the end field to be exposed so you need both of these to zero, both on the sides as well we do the parameters to zero, so we do all three and there you can see what errors are going to be affected and then to preview it, hit slice now you 
So here is what it looks like. Change the settings around so you can see it better. No script brim. Change the field pattern to 3D honeycomb. And so we're going to hit size now again. That's what it looks like. You can see the top and the sides. So we'll go ahead and export and print it out. Here are some more examples on Chris's website of the modifier mesh being used. These are more advanced users. So this is the correct term for this. You can see the top half of the outside has been exposed. And then the fan cover. Then strengthening of a mode for a screw hole. So those are some more examples of it being used. Okay, so it's still printing, but you can start to see this area right here, the modifier mesh area. Alright, so here is the finished print. So you can see the affected area. Here it is off the build plate. So you can see the infill on the top, the pattern where it cuts off at. And you can see it on the sides. This piece is still strong because it is an infill. So that's going to wrap up the video for this week. I'm not only really showing you the basics of 3 printing with a modifier mesh on pre-decisor. Obviously there's more advanced settings you can go in depth with, but I don't keep it simple for now. This is mainly a design feature, but like I said on the screen recording, on the print set you can use it for like screw holes and other structural integrity aspects of it as well but in my opinion 90 percent people are just going to use it for a design feature so if you like this video and see you like this video first make sure to click subscribe and if there's any other tools or techniques that may go over a specific slicer leave a comment down below and i'll try to get to it but anyways i'll see you guys next time